Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be uh, connecting with you all. And today we're going to be talking about Chiron, which is a massive archetype. I mean, all the archetypes are really massive. They're much bigger than us. Uh, we could spend our entire lives really plunging into these archetypes. Uh, but Chiron, Chiron's, a, you know, he's, he's profound. I think profound would be the word to uh, illustrate his uh, transcendental nature. And so we're going to talk about this archetype, and then we're going to uh, look at a couple of charts, uh, myself and uh, Linda, Linda and Tashi. And so, um, Linda, do you have that, uh, the, the slides uh, to pull up here? Yes. Yes, I'll just do that now. Okay. And so I'm just going to begin by, you know, we'll take a quick look at... Uh, what the Mr. Scientists are saying uh, this, this uh, planetary body looks, at, looks like right now. He's not the most uh, photogenic uh, planet, uh, but right now they're suspecting that he has rings around him like Saturn. So if you could go to the next slide, we can take a look at what they're uh, suspecting he looks like. At least in recent years, he seems to be uh, changing. So. There you go, just a little quote from the astronomers. He's, he's got ring around them, they're suspecting now. So we're just gonna begin by taking a, a look at how he physically uh, exists in our, in our solar system, his uh, orbit, and we'll, talk, we'll take a look at his uh, discovery chart. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the archetype and look at him in the example charts. Uh, so if you could go ahead and look uh, at the next slide. We'll begin to look at his uh, elliptical orbit. So Chiron is unique in his uh, elliptical orbit here. The fact that he uh, rotates in between Saturn and Uranus, which is symbolic uh, for his nature. Uh, Saturn, as you know, is, uh, you know, he's the planet of karma. He's uh, where we do a lot of heavy lifting in our lives. And Chiron is another planet where we do significant heavy lifting. You know, this is a planet that really denotes spiritual work, as we're going to talk about. And in the endeavor of doing spiritual work, this is what really allows him to become transcendent into the upper world, which is represented by Uranus. And Uranus is also the future and the higher mind and our capability to pioneer solutions on a level different than where the problems are created in the first place. And so it's interesting that Chiron weaves in between Saturn and Uranus. And we're going to talk about today how Chiron is a place where we weave in between the upper and the lower worlds. This is a, a dual planet, similarly to Pluto, where there's a union and separating desires. Well, Chiron is a planet that takes us into the underworld and also takes us into our own mastery and transcendence from out of the lower worlds. So here we see his orbit. He's approximately a 51-year orbit. Uh, goes in between Saturn and Uranus. He spends the majority of his time in the signs of Aries and Pisces, where he is furthest from the sun. And so when he's in these signs, he tends to be very long transits. And so similarly to like when we have, for example, transiting Saturn. When Saturn is moving slower, say on top of one of our planets, we feel the effect of Saturn, but it tends to be a little bit more subtle and a little bit more long-term. Whereas when Saturn's moving very quickly, he kind of packs a bigger punch and it happens faster. And so similarly, when Chiron is transiting the signs of particularly Aries and Pisces, uh, he has an effect. It's still very deep and transformative, but a little bit more subtle and a little more long term. Whereas when he's moving through the signs of uh, Libra, Scorpio, Virgo, he's moving faster and tends to hit a little bit harder. So anyways, that's just a little bit of a look at his orbit as he actually uh, plays out in our uh, solar system. So if you could uh, take us to the next slide. Thank you, Linda. Uh, this is his discovery chart. And here we're gonna really start to look at the archetype of Chiron. Uh, 
And so, as you probably know, uh, Chiron is the wounded healer. Uh, in his myth, he is struck by a poisoned arrow from Hercules. And because Chiron is immortal, he now has an immortal wound, which really drives him to become the master healer, which he is renowned for in the, the Greek stories. He's the, you know, he creates the first school. Uh, he's a master herbalist. He's a master astrologer. And so Chiron represents this mastery that happens through having to address this wounded nature, which does not seem to go away. And this is how Chiron affects us in our own natal chart as well is this is a place where we experience redundant woundedness. And these are themes that we keep returning to. But each time we return to these themes, we make new discoveries. We bring healing awareness into the dark of the shadow, of the past, of where the initial woundedness took place. And so very interestingly, looking at this discovery chart, we see that he has his own son, conjoined Uranus and Scorpio. And Uranus and Scorpio is similarly bringing this light into the darkness that is the higher mind, that is this higher awareness, and going into the shadow of the unconsciousness. And so this is his purpose. This is his role in his own discovery chart. Now, just uh, you know, talking a few more things about this discovery chart, it's interesting that his south node ruler is Mars in Leo, very heroic personality. That Mars is square to his own Chiron, which was in Taurus at the time of his discovery. And as you know, looking at his myths, Chiron is this heroic personality who ends up replacing Prometheus on the rock, which is inevitably how he experiences his own liberation from his eternal woundedness, is going to Tartarus, where he gets to finally be killed and leave his body. And so he's liberated from his woundedness by replacing Prometheus on the rock. So it's interesting because Prometheus himself is the liberator and Chiron ends up being a liberator of Prometheus. He does have, you know, moon and Chiron, or I'm sorry, moon and Cancer can join Jupiter, trying to that sun, Uranus. So this is empathy. And then with that heroic Mars and Leo, this is where he experiences his own woundedness as replacing Prometheus on the rock, which does take him into his liberation. We also see the North Node conjoin Pluto in the sign of Libra, which is really, you know, North Node conjoin Pluto is a master of this Libra energy, which is really about equality, justice, this type of laying even of the playing field. And so anyways, this is just kind of a look at his own archetype. Now to talk more about archetype of Chiron and how he weaves in between the upper and the lower realms. Chiron is really the place in our chart where we take a plunge. It's where we do a descent into the lower worlds. This can be said to be like hell. If we want to use these simpler, more cultural terms, heaven and hell, they've kind of been simplified. But it's really going into our own pain, our own shadow, the story which can take formation, not only in this lifetime, but throughout multiple lifetimes as well. Chiron can denote in the natal chart where we have experienced redundant woundedness in past lives, which can take the form of cellular memories, which we can re-experience in this life. And similarly, as we may go back into the past of our initial woundedness in this life, we can also, through the placement of Chiron, be going back into woundedness that took place in past lives. And similarly, bringing our own healing awareness into those past lives, into these past circumstances in which there was originally woundedness, we are bringing the light of healing awareness into the darkness. And through that, we are really weaving what Chiron is, which is inevitably unconditional love, to our own past. And so Chiron weaves dimensions together by taking a plunge into lower dimensions, such as replacing Prometheus in the rock in Tartarus. And so this is a Christ-like figure. This is a figure who is doing a shamanic descent 
which inevitably becomes in the service of others. So Chiron is a bodhisattva type of placement in the chart. It's where we go into lower dimensions in order for us to achieve a type of mastery of that area so we can ultimately become healers and benefactors to others in the world. And so Chiron awakens us to compassion. And compassion can only be awakened through the experience of pain. This is just how reality is. We cannot have compassionate for the poor and suffering people that we have no idea what their suffering is like. And so this experience of pain and suffering is actually what awakens us into relating to the pain and suffering in the world, which gives us the capability to be compassionate and healing of others in the world. And so Chiron, being a centaur, represents mankind and represents the earth. And as we have probably heard, the earth is like, it's a, it's a middle planet. It's in between the lower and the upper worlds. And because it's in between, this is where we experience full spectrum experiences. It's not all just fun and games, and it's not all just suffering. And there is an opportunity in being in a middle realm, in being a human being, in being on the margins between pleasure and pain and weaving in between because it is this weaving in between these dimensions which awakens our hearts to compassion. And if we experience pleasure all the time, we wouldn't be able to help people who are suffering. And if we were suffering all the time, we wouldn't be able to lift ourselves up and become strong. So again, he represents this going back and forth and this weaving, which ultimately takes us into transcendence. Now, Chiron, again, having to do with Saturn and Uranus, this is a place where we have to do work. And because each of us has free will and choices, we can do this type of healing work or we can avoid it. And so, like we said, the Chiron cycle is around 50 years. When someone goes through a Chiron return, it can depict a time in which they are really coming full circle and experiencing a level of transcendence, which is looking back at their own wounded nature as it, is, as it has existed in the past and seeing it from the higher perspective, seeing how these wounds and how these gifts have really bestowed upon them a healing capacity. However, this does not have to be the case. If someone has escaped and avoided their own woundedness throughout life or not paid attention to these things or you know just swept it under the rug, the Chiron return can be a point of crisis and re-experiencing some of the woundedness of the past. And so just to illustrate this very quickly, say, for example, someone has Chiron in Pisces, if, and you know, you're dealing with this person as a client and they're coming through their Chiron return, you can sort of sense in them or see in them, is this person seeming like they're really coming into a level of transcendence and mastery? Or does this person seem like they're a lost puppy dog and they have no idea what's going on and they have no grip on reality and they're losing themselves? Because someone with Chiron in Pisces could even be a healer who's giving, giving, giving to everybody else, but they may not have healed themselves. And so the Chiron return can also be this experience, this re-experience of crises, depending on how much we've confronted, dove into our own underworld, and brought that healing awareness into our own wounds. And so this is the two sides of Chiron as we see the wound, where he shows our own redundant, painful experiences, where we felt shunned, unloved, ignored. And this can also describe cellular memories from the past which could have been redundantly experienced as well. So it is this re-experiencing of suffering which ultimately provokes us to address these wounds and provokes us into compassion, into goodness and healing. Okay, so again, this is where healing awareness meets the past where the wound took place in order to bridge it with the future. And this is where Chiron becomes the gifts and tools of healing is this is where we make discoveries through our own personal afflictions and wounded nature. That is the opportunity through confronting our own wounds 
to find tools, to find methods, to find solutions, similarly as Chiron did in his own experience, which allowed him into liberation, leaving the wound behind. And then those tools, those discoveries that we find, those are the things that we get to share with other people. So it's a very brilliant uh, potential, as much as it also can be a, an area where we experience uh, some of the harder sides of life. Okay, so uh, I think we can go ahead and move on to, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the, the charts then. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really generally talk about what's going on in these charts, beginning with Tashi. And thank you guys for volunteering your charts uh, for this, uh, uh, you know, this, this kind of deep subject here. So we're just gonna really generally talk about the themes that are going on here. And then I'll let uh, the volunteers speak for themselves and talk about their own experience and the tools that they might have found on their own healing journey. So, uh, you know, in the, in the birth chart, whenever Chiron is aspecting a bunch of planets like we see in these charts, you know, this, this is the call to action. It really ties our own healing journey in with our life in a big way, which is this simultaneous blessing and curse that is Chiron as it sort of forces us to get down with it, which is, can seem like a pain in the ass at first, but then ultimately it really takes us into being a healer and a master. So in this chart, we see Chiron is in Capricorn, conjoined the moon, square to Neptune, trying to the sun, in a yod formation with Venus, Jupiter, Pluto, opposite to Uranus. So what we're aspecting, one, uh, two, three, four, five, six planets here. So there's a lot going on. Now, where Chiron is in the chart, in the sign of Zodiac, this is where we, in the, in the sign of, of Capricorn, this is where we initially experience a woundedness. And so it's interesting because the ruler of Tashi South, South Node is the moon in Capricorn, and it's also conjoined Chiron. This can signify that there are cellular memories here, the South Node tied with the past. And when Chiron is conjoined the moon, because the moon is somewhat conscious, it's the, it's the part that's familiar to us and that we relate to, the moon being like the ego, it also makes that wound more brought to the surface. And when you know, more, more uh, conscious and more tied in with our own identity, our own overcoming of our woundedness. And so Chiron in Capricorn can be like not really being taken seriously. You know, it's like a wounded reputation. Now also it can be experienced as like there's no stability early on in life. And her south node is in Cancer. And she also has Neptune in the fourth house. So this can describe an early life situation where there is no instability. It can potentially represent some woundedness with the mother, the moon being the mother and cancer. And so there can initially be this fear of loss of control. And that is, again, what provokes the healing journey is this, uh, this sense of instability. And so that leads into attempting to create control, to be strong, to sort of prove her own worth to consolidate structure. And we see that Chiron is in the seventh house as well. So this can be played out through uh, seeking it out from others, through partnerships, through institutions, right? Capricorn stuff, trying to create this sense of structure potentially through fitting the mold. And this can, or this can be manifested in this endeavor as sort of, you know, trying to fit the mold for others, trying to, you know, come into that sense of control by doing it the institutionalized other person way, seeking that out in partnership. But ultimately with Chiron can join the moon, it's really an inward journey. It's, it's about creating structure and control ultimately in herself. And so Chiron is ultimately where we become a master. She's a builder. She's a constructor. She's like a wise elder, you know, having come through real three-dimensional worldly experience. This is Capricorn, knowing how the world actually is and having that type of mature, responsible understanding of life. And so she's a master of control and responsibility. That can be a big part of her purpose with that Chiron trying to the sun. This makes us very 
our, our son being who we are in the present and our purpose, you know, very united with our own healing journey of overcoming, finding this inner strength. And again, with the moon Chiron, it can be more conscious of these cellular memories or a subconscious identification with the wound. Like I'm the person who busts my ass and tries to get it all together, Chiron in, in Capricorn, and then it just doesn't happen early on in life. And then later on in life, it's I'm the person who overcomes, who holds it together. Her Saturn is in Scorpio in the fifth house. She's got a lot of passion. She is ultimately coming into this creative control and power, being her own authority. And that's how she has these healing gifts that she's offering to others. Now, the Chiron square to Neptune can also suggest an early sense of abandonment. Again, Neptune in the fourth house, disconnect from the family or an instability that's there. And it's like trying to make these dreams a reality, but initially they might be held back and that might create some of the, the wounding, uh, woundedness there. Um, and ultimately it's, it's really manifesting those ideals into reality through being again, her own authority. And there is that yod between Venus and Jupiter, you know, the relationship dynamics, uh, you know, am I lovable? Uh, you know, you know, can I connect with other people? And there's a shifting of perspectives that's really asked for with the in conjunct to Jupiter. The in conjunct to Pluto is one that really makes this dynamic, again, uh, very powerful, very restless, and drives us into our own depth, into our own underworld. And then Chiron's opposite to Uranus. And Chiron is opposite to Uranus for a long time, you know, 1952 to 1990. Chiron is opposite to Uranus. And this is this whole period of time where there's a lot of illumination that's going on during these years. And these souls with that opposition to Uranus are sort of forced into seeing the higher perspective of our wounds, reverberating back and forth between that higher mind, which is Uranus, and our own wounded nature. So I don't want to talk too much, and I want to let uh, Tashi, and by asking her the question, you know, how she might have experienced her own woundedness and how uh, you might have overcome that and what tools you might have discovered along uh, that way. Okay, well, that was lovely and interesting. Um, bravo, what a lovely insight into Chiron. Lots of new things. I didn't know that it was opposed for those many years. So I have been an astrologer since I was about 14. Um, I was born speaking to angels. I think that's the moon Neptune. And that was a big problem because I knew too many things about too many people. And my mother made me shut up, which was a wound. Um, there was a lot of instability in my early childhood. Um, sorry. And, um, but it wasn't unpleasant. You know, I had a, a sweet childhood. I just had my parents going through the divorce of the 50s, that Neptune, Uranus square. And I think the hardest thing that I can tell you about my experience of Chiron is I, I was born pretty conscious with hearing from angels and knowing things like a crystal child, but I was probably one of the first indigos and it was difficult to be so advanced. I skipped like two years of school and I was popular. I didn't have that that you were talking about um, but of course, the Saturn in Scorpio is deep, and now I'm doing things, so I question the depth of other people's love. I should finish my sentence. And then now, Uranus is opposing my Neptune, and I find myself, I'm just, I just put on a charity concert, a huge rock and roll band called The Strokes, which was very formidable in, at the Wiltern Theater in LA. And I did it in like a minute, I'm sorry. Um, I can't turn it off this phone. There. Um, so, yeah, I have definitely taken the passion and the self-empowerment, and it's always, I think the hardest thing about the Capricorn is to be a conscious leader. That's really been difficult, and it's constantly difficult. <laughs> Sorry, my phone rang. Um, okay, so I don't know what else you'd like me to say. Um, if you have found any, any tools or methods to, to help you through your, your process of coming into being the leader and being the foundation for other people? So when I was 17, I met a man named Jack Schwartz who taught me how to see auras, taught me how to remote view, taught me how to do a lot of things. And he taught me naturopathic, homeopathic healing, 
So I went into chiropractic, acupuncture. I stayed away from Western. I became a yogi, a vegetarian. Uh, that comes and goes because I'm an O positive blood type. Um, so I struggle a little bit with that. But I tried everything Eastern and just adapted like a lot of people in my generation. We opened up health food stores. Um, I learned to cook that way. I fed my family and my friends that way. I grow a garden now, an organic garden. Um, and I live in, you know, urban Los Angeles, so it's kind of nobody, in, <laughs> no one has one, but I do. And everybody's now eating out of it, which just makes me very happy. So I think I found meditation at 17. And with that 12th house, that's what helped. And of course, astrology helped. Um, and then when I met Jeffrey and, you know, I was already an astrologer with a world level class practice, people on continents and had been traveling and teaching. But when I met him, I just sat at his feet like a beginner and went, oh, what is this? <laughs> and I had a lot of husbands who died, which I think has been a very big lesson of the Chiron office at the Uranus so that I could learn to speak to them on the other side and see them on the other side. And I do. And then they help me a lot. They tell me things and help me. Um, that has probably been the weirdest part of my maybe Chiron Jupiter and Chiron Uranus. And Jeffrey told me I'd been a master healer in my past life and a master astrologer. But I think I had to come back because I was good at it from the beginning. I think I had to come back and learn evolutionary astrology because it's just, I don't think it existed before for humans, not even in the Vedic tradition or, or the Chinese. And so that's my passion now is to really help teach it and do that, be a leader and do that. And of course, I, when you said they started school, I thought, yes, I want to start another school, <laughs> you know, California division for, for our school. And here I am online trying to teach it and help. Be your guinea pig. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all that. You're welcome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the Uranus opposition, you know, it can be the shocking re-experience of the wound and also the shocking insights coming spontaneously too. So again, thank you for sharing uh, your experience with that and the relationships. Okay, so I think we got to speed up here and move on to Linda. Yeah, hi, Timothy. Hello. So, here, oh. Okay. Yeah, you can you can go ahead. Let's just go ahead and do that. Sorry, what did you want me to do? Um, you can go ahead and, and, and explain your story if you want, or we can talk about the dynamics really generally at first with Chiron and Aquarius. Um, okay, sure. I'll just be very brief. Um, I've got a whole page here, but I'll cut it down. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you got time. Okay, great. Uh, my mother had me at a very young age and I, I felt rejected by her for my whole life, really. I experienced my father as wounding, hurtful and untrustworthy. These early wounding experiences created a need to get away from the family and live very far away. This saved me and allowed an individuation process to occur. The chirotic wounding created a compulsive and desperate need for friendship and loyalty. I would cling to friends like they were the center of my universe. My Chiron is ruled by Uranus in Leo, conjunct the midheaven. I was the most loyal friend ever. However, I was taken advantage of, and most of these friendships led to traumatic betrayals and sudden separations. And um, after my Chiron return, I'm now able to see the emotional truth of others. Although I am empathetic to their suffering, I take a much more objective stance which becomes essential in order to bring profound astrological insights into their soul dynamics. With Chiron and Aquarius fourth, I have been searching for my soul family and have found it in the astrological community. I am very sensitive to the emotional suffering of others, deeply empathetic, pr pr protective, accepting of people's feelings and their pain. I have an ability to nourish others emotionally and to accept them unconditionally in every moment. This empathetic Ability is especially useful in practicing astrology with understanding and insight into the pain of others. I totally accept them for their differentness. Mm -hmm. That was the wounding side. 
and um, the tools I have discovered to help and transcend my Chiron wound. Um, after being rejected by others, I was forced in on myself to develop emotional self-reliance from within. What has helped me to heal is having a home in the country, living on a property by myself in solitude, in harmony with nature and natural laws, where I reside in a meditative and calm state and lead a healthy lifestyle. I have discovered that my differentness is my greatest strength. I feel comfortable in the uniqueness of my own mind, being a free thinker, holding controversial ideas, and being an outsider to the system. I passionately pursue my creative astrological projects and I'm content to live in my own unique world. There we are. Done. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you so much. Would you and like to move to your chart? Or? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. I'm just going to quickly say, you know, okay. it's just to resummarize here, you know, Chiron in, in Aquarius is like being an ET ahead of your own time. In the fourth house, there's tumultuousness. There is, uh, you know, um, you know, an experience with the family here. Mm. Ultimately, it's really, you know, being ahead of your own time. And so all of this brilliance and this genius are your own gifts, too. It's interesting having that conjoined Lilith, too. You know, that, that genius uh, and that ahead of your own time nature, uh, you know, being very repressed and then ultimately being a core part of who you are. So that's really beautiful. And the sextile to Saturn, too, can really help in terms of really focusing and doing the work, the spiritual work, your own healing work, overcoming, and then using all of those tools, all of those gifts that you have involved in, in astrology and using it in a very uh, practical, concrete, and focused way. So that's really beautiful. I'll just mention really quickly, my stepdaughter also has Chiron in Aquarius, and she has very similar uh, ET type of experience. Uh, she's being raised by uh, quite a tribe of adults, which is interesting. And similarly, you know, early on, she's, she's trying to fit in. And oftentimes she does this through trying to be an adult herself, emulate like the adults, uh, try to fit in that way when she's, uh, you know, the odd one out in terms of being just seven years old. And uh, another Chiron in Aquarius on the IC is actually Edgar Allan Poe who we know experienced a lot of uh, trauma in his own family experiences as well. The difference is his Uranus uh, was in Scorpio conjunct his North Node. So uh, yeah, we can move on to my chart now and I'll just fill up the next couple minutes talking really briefly here. So I got my Chiron in Cancer, uh, conjoined Jupiter opposite to, Ur opposite to Neptune, Saturn, uh, square to Mars in trying to Pluto. So I'll just say with the, the Chiron Jupiter trying to Pluto, I, I do have cellular memories from past lives uh, that I re-experienced early in childhood. My family situation uh, had a very severe lack of the nurturing, empathetic maternal energy, which I wasn't really aware of at the time, but it did generate within me uh, really big emotional reactions. As a child, I oftentimes remember coming home and just anticipating my entire family to be dead or my mother to be killed and having really huge emotional reactions from those circumstances, uh, sort of you know, replaying a past life trauma where I've lost uh, family and was disconnected from my own uh, maternal nature. As a child, I also remember wanting to be a girl, not for any sexual gender related issues, but because women were allowed to be soft and maternal and nurturing and in my family was absolutely prevented. Men had to do the labor, had to do the work, had to hold it all together. That's at least how I was conditioned early on with Chiron opposite to Saturn. There's some of that you know, authoritative fatherly oppressiveness. And I was very disconnected from my own nurturing capability to pamper myself. Uh, those, you know, Chiron and Cancer is ruled by the moon, which I have in Taurus as my skipped steps. So I was very disconnected from my own emotional body and my own sensitivity. And uh, Chiron opposite to Neptune can oftentimes be experienced as, you know, escapism, really going off into my own mind, creating all sorts of worlds and all sorts of crazy ways in order to sort of create uh, this bubble around myself um, from coming from this type of uh, disconnect from the maternal uh, nurturing nature. So what I'm working on these days to try and really uh, come back into my own 
sensitivity and capability to be uh, a teacher of nurturance too. And I'll also say uh, Chiron conjoined Jupiter is also a, a wounded spiritual or religious perspective. Uh, my own perspective ontological, the way I break apart reality and see reality and kind of that bird's eye Jupiterian view is quite uh, stoic. You know, it's quite uh, macabre the way I see reality with that Jupiter Chiron. And I think this also uh, has its origins in past lives where there was uh, significant oppressiveness, disconnect from the mother, from the family, and from that nurturing uh, type of sensitivity. And so in my own journey of overcoming this, I'm essentially learning to pamper the living shit out of myself, uh, which is something I was never taught as a child. Um, one tool or technology that I recently discovered that I, I find is incredibly powerful for healing the cancer archetype is uh, sensory, depriva sensory, sensory deprivation float tank, where you essentially go back into the womb <laughs> and are you know floating out there in outer space and you can't feel anything and it forces a very very deep relaxation and you're basically being hugged by thousands of pounds of epsom salts and so it's extremely nurturing uh, type of technology and i found that that has been uh, working wonders in terms of really relaxing uh, back into my own uh, maternal nature uh, and, and sort of reaccessing my own inner child in that endeavor, where uh, early on in life I was very much conditioned to be uh, this patriarchal hard ass with that Saturn and Capricorn. That Saturn is very close to his own south node in Capricorn. Um, so, anyways, that's that's sort of my own abridged uh, healing journey. And uh, in you know the next couple minutes, if anybody has any questions about it. Um, or about anything involving Chiron, we can talk about it. I have a question. Yeah. I noticed on this, um, thank you, that was wonderful. I love learning about Chiron. Um, I was wondering about uh, the discovery chart. Uh, I noticed that Chiron was at uh, three degrees Taurus or something like that. What if your um, certain planets are conjunct that? I just had this like kind of aha moment. This could be a conversation for offline, but I wondered about that. And there's other connections to my chart on that discovery chart that was like, whoa. That's, that's <laughs> and I wonder chart. about that. I have like, no idea is the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I just kind of came to me something to ponder. If somebody comes up with something, please share that kind of like made me go, hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe there's a connection there, you know, yeah. sensory. so you would think that, you know, if maybe you have some similarities to Chiron's own chart, that that might be uh, something to look into. So that's a really awesome question. Thank you. Timothy, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much, guys, for inviting me to participate. That was so awesome. Just wonderful. And Tashi, thank you so much, too. And everybody, uh, Timothy, please come again. We'd love to... Love for you to do more Zoom meetings. Spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. That was wonderful. Excellent. My pleasure. Thank you so much, guys. And you're all so inspirational to me. So thanks for everything that you all do. Timothy's of the Pluto Scorpio generation, everybody. Isn't that wonderful? Yay. Thanks, guys. Bulldozers. <laughs> <laughs>